The last thing I want to take up is exenatide. Uh, and uh, you heard a little bit about this from John Buse yesterday, or if you went to the Wednesday night symposium. But it, it actually turns out, just as the symposium was beginning, the FDA announced that exenatide was now being able to be approved together with basal insulin. And so that was something that was waiting. John Buse, who you heard from yesterday and in that symposium, had actually published a study earlier this year in the Annals of Internal Medicine that showed if you optimize the glargine dose as basal insulin, and then you added either exenatide or placebo, you could get the A1C down to 6.7%, a further reduction of about 1.5% of A1C by adding uh, exenatide uh, before breakfast and supper. Uh, exenatide short-acting version, there was some discussion yesterday about short-acting versus long-acting GLP-1s, but the short-acting one controls postprandial glycemia quite well, and together with, with glargine, which is a basal insulin to control fasting, this allows you to get both types of defects uh, that are present in control in type 2 diabetes and be able to handle them both without adding an increased risk of hypoglycemia, which you might get if you tried to use uh, uh, prandial insulin. And what you can see in the, uh, in the glargine plus exenatide group on the bottom, if you look at the excursions after breakfast and after the drug was given, you can see there's essentially little or no glucose rise. It's still there at lunch because in this case, exenatide is not the midday meal because it's only approved for twice a day, although many doctors, myself included, use it three times a day to control the postprandial excursion uh, with lunch as well, although that's an off-label use. Here's what happened to weight with that. Not much weight gain in the, in the group, but a little, but, but weight loss, as is typical when adds a GLP-1 when you added it here to insulin glargine. And so that's what, what John had, uh, had shown.